Hello? Hello? Has a print. Hello, Spring. Stepping up to Connor. Quite the print. Okay. Yeah. I am muted. Oh. Claire Hatton. Hi. 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 Hi.
こんにちはセラムアレイコンセラムアレイコンHello, my name is Rachel Watkins, and I would like to send a special thank you to Open Doors Multicultural Family.、Um, they are very helpful and h a s helped my family in many, many ways, and we hope to continue on their great program. Thank you again. Buenos días a todos. Mi nombre es María y e r e s t o Miguel. Y quiero agradecer a Open Doors por toda la ayuda que nos han dado. Proporcionando alimentos y también otras formas de ayuda que nos proporcionan. Que tengan un buen día. Tháng 7, ngày 20, năm 2020, từ lâu là bị virus, cho nên Di là cạo hiền cũng không đi làm được và ô bình đau cũng có cơ thể hỗ trợ giúp đỡ cho một phần nào về vấn đề là phút bên. Thì thường thứ hai chúng tôi 
đến tại khu vực đó để xin nhận những cái mặt hàng của các bên là cũng cần giúp đỡ cho tôi xin chân thành đại diện cho gia đình và đại diện cho cháu Huyền để cảm ơn và dạ, xin thành kiến je tiens à remercier du fond du cœur les portes ouvertes pour la famille multiculturelle au Pindor et ses parties prenantes pour tout le soutien que nous apportons, en particulier en cette période très stante de Corona. Merci pour l'aide alimentaire, financière et tout. Merci beaucoup. Danger all open door. What may happen to you? Walk up, keep up, walk up. Salam, open door. Do my camera. Show me film on the telephone. Up on I, blam blam, blam. Open door format. Catch up family. Catch up family. Name is Konke. To go on a gold lot. The full life in the house. Covid has a bit sharp. To go on a zone of home. Night. Hang up. Night. And I got up. Night. Gun. Seven. أتصل وناولكم بالتأمين أني لي. كم تجي عن من السوبر على لو كي تبقى مين أو كندور فاميلي لما مسكن المفلكة مكنيا شون بزيس عن بتلاقي سلالة بكار شون المفلكة بمجرد بكار شرسة عن شون بزيس عن كوفيد ناينتين بزيس سلالة عن شون يجيب بس عن لما مسكن على لو لو يجيب يعني عن لو مين عن مسكن على لو سلالة هلو مفلكة أو كندور I'm a Khazani Kim Ajin La Washington State, La America. Hey, when you man here, the open doors for multicultural families, Karekharika, Karekharika, Chaldiri Dekar, Debare, Khazanakan, Kamnaoyan here, the girl type at TKVC. Zur Spasi open doors again, Bohamu, Yarmatiak. یاد با نامکان من یعنی ایاد با اما خزانی آم نوانا و به تایبتی سفاسی آپن دور زکن لکلم کارت لکارتی کووید ناینتین با همو خدمت کزیتی با اما آم نوکان من Good evening and welcome in. My name is Mitch Nellis and I am so, so honored to be here this evening. I recently had an opportunity to be introduced to Open Doors for Multicultural Families and I am so inspired and excited about this evening. So welcome all of you this evening to our annual Open Hearts for Open Doors. First, I wanna thank you all for taking the time to celebrate with us tonight. This event has been brought to us by our sponsors, Group Health Foundation, Seattle Children's Foundation, and Home Street Bank. Let's all give them a round of applause. We can do spirit fingers or snaps or clap wherever you are. Uh, thank you so, so much to our amazing, amazing sponsors. So let's hear it. Let's see those hands. I see some hands. I see some faces with the, with the hearts popping up. Um, however you want to thank and give credit to all our sponsors, thank you so, so much once again to Group Health Foundation, 
to Seattle Children's Foundation and to Home Street Bank. These sponsors continuously display their commitment to diversity and inclusion by serving this community. Their value in our work inspires all of us at Open Door for, multi for Multicultural Families to keep pushing and do the best that we can. And that's what we do every day for everyone here. Their actions bring us one step closer to an inclusive society. They've continued to provide the resources that will help numerous families. ODMF recognizes your ongoing support and partnership. Thank you so, so much. One more time, let's hear it for all of our sponsors. And again, let's hear it for all of you who are taking the time out of your busy schedules to be here this evening. It truly is awe-inspiring to see all the people who are here virtually via Zoom. We wish we were all together in the same room, um, but we know that we've all been affected. We just watched that really touching video about how people have been affected by this pandemic and how we're working together uh, to get through it together. Today, we are celebrating a week of competitive auction bidding. Currently, we stand at $27,500. So great job, everyone, but we've got some work to do. As we continue the event, let me remind everyone that we have one more hour to bid for these amazing items. Every dollar goes to expanding Open Doors programs to increase our impact. Let me, let me remind you that every dollar we raise tonight is used to help a struggling family who is trying to overcome unbelievable odds to create a wonderful life for their family in America. So again, thank you everyone for taking the time to attend this event. I would like to encourage you to participate in the chat room for any questions or comments. I'd like to start off by asking you to comment on what your connection to Open Doors is so we can all get a better understanding of who is in the Zoom today. So feel free while the evening's going on to add a little bit of your story to the Open Doors story. How did you get here tonight? How have you been touched by ODMF? Now, I would like to welcome in our visionary leader and executive director, Ginger Kwan, to officially Welcome you to the event. Let's hear it for Ginger, everybody. Woo! Hoo, 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 hoo. <laughs> Thanks, Mitch. And thank you for all our friends and families that I have known you and some of you I haven't met yet. I didn't have the privilege to meet you. I hope that we will all get connected someday. But first of all, I want to say thank you to our staff, Sabrine, who has been putting so much effort to do this work, and many of our staff who are working behind the scenes to support the families we serve. So we are here tonight, really, is to celebrate the community we serve. And we are here for the community we serve. That also means these are people who have different mental disabilities or individual or intellectual disabilities and their family come from linguistically and culturally diverse backgrounds. In 2009, we started Open Doors for the purpose of ma making sure that individuals who we want to serve will have the opportunity to access to the services they need in order for their sons or daughter to thrive in the inclusive society. And I would say for 12 years now, we have made progress, we have made a lot of triumphs. At the same time, we also continue to see many challenges that existing in our community because of the inequitable resources that has come to our organization to serve our community. So for that tonight, um, I, I know that you're gonna enjoy our program because we have people who have received our services to to talk about themselves and also share with us what they have received through the service we provided at Open Doors. And also we have a keynote speaker as a self-advocate himself will be able to share his, you know, touching stories to remind us that every person, regardless of their differences, they are valuable society members and we can look, we can look through the lenses of equity, we can see the strength, we can look through the, the beauty of them. Each one of them has different gifts. 
And that's what we need to focus on is to celebrate the, the progress we have and continue to stand up and fight for the challenges that existing and inequity existing in our community. So for that, I will hand it back to Mitch and hope that you all will enjoy our program tonight. And then think about the person we serve are so amazing. Thank you, Mitch. Ginger, thank you so, so much for your amazing and inspirational words. Let's hear it. We'll go back to that applause for Ginger. Um, but I also know that Sabrine just posted the link to the silent auction in the chat. And so before I introduce our guest speaker, I want to talk about a wonderful auction item, French Cakes by Clark. He is a client of ODMF. He's been living with autism for 25 years. Clark learned French cake at Specialty Desserts and Breads program of Seattle Central College. Like many other clients, he wanted to give back to the organization that helped them by showing their talent. So please enjoy tonight's program, but remember to bid high, to bid often. The link is in the chat and it's easy to click on. It's easy to check out the items while we are all privileged and honored to bring in our guest speaker. So with that, it is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce our guest speaker, Hassan Davis. He is a youth development specialist and long-term, long-time advocate. Hassan has transformed organizations and public systems to ensure they have the capacity to not only meet the needs of children and the families and the children's families, that's key, meeting the children's needs and their families' needs they serve, but also are transparent and set metrics and methods of accountability. So today he will speak on social issues our community faces. Without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I am so honored to bring in, and we didn't plan to wear the same color. That just totally happened, right, Hassan? We didn't plan that. That's right, that's right. Here is Hassan Davis. All right, thank you so much, Mitch, and good evening or after, well, I guess it's late evening for you all. I'm in Kentucky, and so I'm so excited to be here tonight with you all. My experience of Open Doors goes back a few years where I had a chance to do some work with a lot of the regional support networks and, and met Ginger and her amazing team. We took a couple couple uh, action shots, and it, it was great, and I've always I've been waiting for the opportunity to reconnect and be in conversation with you all. So this is amazing to me. I've only got a short amount of time and I've got like 85 slides because I got so excited and I'm, I understand we're not going to get to them, but the way my brain processes, I just had to put it all in there, but I got a great conversation I want to have with you. The first thing I want to do is I want to share with you a, a poem that I wrote uh, that really captures for me. Uh, the hard challenge of moving young people into their better places and the work that it takes and the work that that that, that open door and, and others do to make those types of things happen. It's called The Race. It was a day like the rest, me sitting right there with the lost kids in another special class where we would fit the round pegs into square holes all day as the teacher's excuse, we were made just that way. There's no need to be worried. You've no reason to stress. Your poor lives are not fair, so you just do your best. These last words they'd sing and then settle us all down, passing glue and round scissors for our popsicle stick crowns. And while crafting a band for my popsicle crown, I reached hand in the pocket and guess what I found? It was a note from my mother, uh, again like last week, a reminder things don't have to stay as we see. Written bold in block letters, more easily read, it still took me a while, but here's what that note said. I will love you each day like the first you were mine, but to change in their eyes, you must first change your mind. If you want new results, you can't accept what they say about your needs that make them think this box was okay. To put an eagle with chicks does not mean he's to blame, but he must one day fly, son, or fail just the same. 
So keep your mind on your dreams and keep your eyes on that door because the inevitable victory can still be yours. To raise you up high any risk I would take, but you, my dear boy, you must plan this escape. Now, having no clue what that last line inferred, I returned to my crown with not much of a word. But the next minute there, I spent disbelieving. No way could I see what my eyes were perceiving. A window had appeared where there'd been none before among these walls and locks and peepholes and door. From where this thing came, I could hardly have guessed. But bright light, the cool breeze, had all captured my breath. And right outside the window, I heard sounds unknown. Sounds of cheering and laughter and loud microphones. There were announcers announcing on their loudspeakers speaking, welcoming all the champions that came from last week. And she said, today is today. And last week was back then. On a day like this, folks, anyone could still win. Now, looking back, I realized they did not expect me to take those words, that excitement so personally. But there's no control over the words that we say. Once out of the mouth, they translate their own way. Every ear that can hear must interpret for self. So I picked up my note and started up the bookshelf. Then I slipped past that teacher and over the pane of the window before they could close it again. Then I shimmied down columns just right for escaping and rushed myself over where people were pacing. I arrived at this field, was amazed by the scene of these runners and jumpers on all types of teams. They were stretching and reaching after prepping for months to take the first challenge to clear the high jump. And like antelope, they leaped. None knew fear or seemed hopeless, so I slipped into line praying no one would notice. But someone did see through my thin veiled disguise. It might have been the boots or that scared look in my eyes. I said, please let me try this. It looks like a blast. Not like making those crowns from old popsicle trash. But the judges hemmed, then they hawed, then explained the plain truth. <clears throat> Your talent... Your skills are not for this pursuit. So they removed me from line as the stars started starting. When from up in the bleachers, big voices began barking. Hey, maybe he's lightning just been bottled too long. Y you might think he's weak, but w w what if he is strong? Nobody would ever try as hard as he try. And even if he falls down, he most likely won't die. From what I can guess were new fans of mine and my mother, who must have been there the whole time, came demands I be given one shot at that bar, despite having no chance to show talent thus far. So they made me some room, and they let me back in, quite sure there was no way I could possibly win. And then the time came I was finally on at the line with the silence so deafeningly long. And with vision so clear I could hardly see through it, I dove for the mark as if nothing were to it. There I floated. No, I sailed as the whole crowd stopped breathing. Watching me attempt this, they were not quite believing. Well, I didn't quite make it over. More truthful to say, see, I barely made half the distance that day, but no sooner flat on the mat, I was pumping my fist, making it clear to the crowd I was quite new to this. What they could not have known by the big smile on my face was that five feet had just crushed my best jump to that day. It was three feet higher than the mark in third grade where they started to track me and how I behaved. It was two feet higher than the middle school buzzing they said, soon you'll be dead or in jail like your cousin. See, this mark was the highest that had ever been set. And after trying, I knew I was not quite done yet. So I stopped my odd dancing in time to report there were kids lining up for some other great sport. But before I could make for the next crowded line, I was boxed and closed in by some old friends of mine, sent to track down the fugitive boy from room eight for a quiet return to his seat, to his place. And once back there, they tried to downplay the whole scene, claiming that life for me was just a pipe dream. There are round pegs in your future. These square holes must be filled. It's good work for the hands and your particular skills. So I sat there a while, thinking maybe it's best that they 
rescued and brought me safe back to this desk. Then I looked and took note of all the names I could see of the kids they had rescued and returned before me. There was Carla and Derek, John Tilson's name twice, Rashida, Ramundo, and my long lost friend, Mike. So many more names I could not recognize, including one signed A. Lincoln since 1825. In the top right hand corner, between all of those lines, there was just enough space to finally make this seat mine. But before eyes could dim back to their early blank state, I remembered the sounds from the fans at the race where my mother stood shouting, waving banners sky high. So what if you fall down, boy? You most likely won't die. And a strange courage took hold and swept right over me. I grabbed a handful of crayons and big butcher sheets. I began to draft up plans I long feared to speak. I said march for one hour, one day, then one week. And with those popsicle sticks, I began to build up a small room when complete was a full replica of this box where some said I would live my life out, where none would see my sad face or would hear my mad shout. And inside of that model where a brave looker might see one red X on the wall where that window must still be. And looking around like I'd not done before, I spied keys to the lock on a chain by the door. And since all the teachers were busy passing more crayons and paste, I just left a note on their desk, gone to find my next race. Gone to find my next race. That's the conversation that I'm excited to have with you today. When we think about all of the barriers and obstacles that have been put into place in the way of, of folks who are trying to navigate to their best places, their next great race, all the time someone tells us or someone we love that, this isn't the right place for you, or maybe you should try something else, or let's learn how to do something with our hands. It'll make you happier. We have to remember that we have a right to seek out and to, and to find those places where we grow and we know we are valued. And so I'm excited to be here. One of the things I want to tell you is that I have spent most of my career working in justice programming. And so it's important for me, as exciting as I am, I want to talk some about the real hard part of what it means to be living with uh, a disability, to be experiencing the world like this. We know, and I'm not going to spend lots of time on this data. I got to go through it fast because I want to make sure that we get to the substantial pieces, but it's important to see this. Restraint, seclusions, arrest, and suspensions. When we think about young people experiencing disability, there's a much greater likelihood that they will be experiencing in public spaces, in community places where they ought to be safe, these kinds of challenges. The data tells us that students with disabilities are twice as likely to receive suspensions as other students. Students who receive seclusion, experience restraint, and those types of things are more likely to eventually experience suspension. Young people, young people of color, young people of color who have English as not a primary language, if you start to see how that funnels down, it creates an increased likelihood that young people trying to navigate the world the way it is will find themselves being blocked and, and barricaded. And so it's important for us to continue to understand that, and it continues to be a challenge. Young people of color become much more likely to experience those more difficult parts of our system. And then, as they continue to navigate, experience suspension. And then the data tells us that suspension increases by every time a young person experiences some kind of uh, issue. And so what I will do is I will make this slide deck available to you because I, I won't, can't go into detail, but I want you to see the slippery slope that occurs when families navigate or try to, to navigate systems that they don't understand without a support system, without partners who can help them see and, and, and overcome the very difficult pieces. When you start to see suspensions, the more suspensions, the greater likelihood of dropout. Dropout often takes us to the next big barrier, the justice system. I ran the juvenile justice system in Kentucky for six years. I was vice chair of the Federal Advisory Commission on Juvenile Justice for the Nation and Territories for three years. Justice is the work that I understand professionally and the, the intersection of race, culture, 
and disability into that system are the things that I know emphatically. And so as we talk about the amazing work of Open Doors, it's important for me to frame it in the amazing work they do to close some doors, detention doors, to close the doors to external programs and foster care, all those things that draw young people out when we can't get the supports and services we need right here in our community to serve us the way we need them, who speak our language and can explain to us in the way that we understand. See what I'm saying? So that is the beauty of this amazing organization of, of men and women who step in and who make sure that they are holding that line between harm and hope for so many families. Now, again, there is data after data, and I'm going to try my best just to skim over it so that you know. Dropout data tells us that a person who drops out is much more likely to experience arrest, experience jail, and experience long-term incarceration. So I hope that I've clearly made that slope. When you look at the real data for juvenile justice, a majority of the young people in justice care across the nation, across the state of Washington, across communities, are young people of color, young people experiencing disability, young people experiencing education failure, poverty, trauma. The more of these markers you have, the much more likely exponentially sometimes you are to encounter and be stuck with justice system results. And again, I don't want to beat a dead horse. And so I'm just going to scroll through the next couple of slides and remind you, just tell you, this all leads us in the same conversation. Without interventions, without support systems that allow us to be our authentic selves and to craft the world we want, the life we want for ourselves and the folks we love, then the default with all of those variables takes us deep in the systems that don't have a community, a cultural lens. And these dramatic and traumatic experiences further challenge us when we're trying to get to that development pathway. I wanna share this with you. It's a great diagram that lays out all of the major development theories, plus the adolescent brain science, and talks about what a young person needs to accomplish stage by stage to successfully matriculate to adulthood. I broke it down by section just to give you an idea. And what happens very often is some trauma, some drama, some pain. When the family's disconnected from supports and services, when the family struggles to stay solid and solvent, food security, home security, when all those things are jeopardized, it creates stoppages in the clock. And sometimes they may be seconds, minutes, then hours behind their cohort as they navigate this adolescent brain clock toward development. And those are the places where challenges start to arise. And no matter how good our services are, sometimes it's hard to get the clock started again and other systems step in and intervene or, or take over in ways that are, are harmful. So what I see when, when I think about open doors is their ability to mitigate the harm, to limit the damage done by the adolescent development challenges that may stop the clock. And they create environments and communities that really are connected to the heart of a community and then driving the intellectual cognitive thinking of that community, but they go together. And too often we think about how we intellectually talk about this and not how we make people feel valued, have trust, build community. And so, Again, I, I like slides because they help, but this is really the, the core part of it. It's about the hope that we plant in rocky soil with no knowledge of how deep its roots will sink or how many its fruit will feed. But folk like Open Doors decide to plant those seeds every day and wait and see. Instead of sitting saying, oh, it's probably not going to work. They say, let's see. Let's try. And if this doesn't, then what about the next? And that's the kind of thing that we are supporting here with our presence, with our commitment, with your donations, with, with the auction. And so in a few minutes I have left, I'm gonna tell you why this is personally important to me. My life started like you imagine lots of people. I thought it was amazing. I had a daddy who loved me and worked hard to provide. I had a mama who made me feel valued. I was cute, look at me right there. I got a butterfly collar, the polyester suit, not everybody can pull that off, y'all. And life seemed good. But the older I got, instead of people looking at me talking about the amazing things they could imagine, they had more worry than hope. 
became clear to me at an early age that life with me was going to be an everyday fight to be seen and heard, or it was going to be nothing at all, and I had to make a decision, and I chose to fight. My laundry list of challenges grew quickly, and it grew deeply. Having ADHD and dyslexia, a severe he variation in hearing impairment that continues to, to deteriorate even now, and that's just the reality, you know. As a young person experiencing uh, my father attack my mother and then separating and breaking our family apart, going on and off the food stamp rolls and navigating home insecurity and food insecurity, sometimes sleeping on couches, on floors, five in a bed with somebody else's house as long as we could. As my mama finally got to settle down in first grade, the teacher was so frustrated at that little boy who couldn't sit still and stop touching and stop asking questions that didn't matter. The kid who couldn't take lines and make letters, couldn't take letters and make words, who couldn't take words and make sense. That boy, she said, did not deserve her attention, her love, her brilliance. And so one day she grabbed me up by the arm and she drugged me across the room in front of my classmates. At the back of the room in the closet, she said, okay, this is your new classroom. And as she turned to walk out, she locked the door behind her. And that became our ritual. Every morning she would drag me into that box and explain clearly that this was the place I deserved to be. And then she would go off to the children who might be something one day. Now, you know like I know that that is unacceptable now, but there's a time and sometimes we still have to fight people who believe that they get to decide how great we are and that they have some amazing supernatural power to determine at an early age that some of us just won't make it so they just doing us a favor well my mom always taught me two things you can do with any time you find yourself in a difficult situation figure out how you got there she said then figure out how you use it well i was there because i was that boy but i didn't know how to use it every day i would get locked in this box and i would scream at the walls and punch the coach and i would cry but it just made sense why wouldn't this be a place for a boy who, who can't make lines make sense? For a boy who can't sit still and act right? For a boy whose parents don't even love each other? Why wouldn't this make sense? So I sat there day after day, and one day after screaming at the coats and punching the walls, I looked up and dried my eyes, and I realized that that coat room, that closet, was where every other kid kept their lunchbox. And all of a sudden, God's plan for me was revealed. Because Susie had the peanut butter jelly sandwiches without the crust, Bobby always had fruit cups, and Jimmy always had Tang instant breakfast drink. Now, before Capri Sun, before Juice Box, right? If you had Tang, you was like astronauts. It was amazing. And so for a few days, I ate good until Mama started coming to complain about their babies coming home hungry. And then came to investigate the mystery of the coat room like a Scooby-Doo episode. And there I was with lunchboxes spread around me like a buffet. And that teacher was so embarrassed and angry that she drugged that little boy out of the box all the way to that seat in the front of the room next to her desk so she could keep an eye on that bad boy. She didn't do it out of compassion. She didn't do it out of some sense that she might be able to create something where other people had failed to try she did it out of desperation, but what she accidentally did was she restarted my clock. She created a possibility. Now, I wish that I had allies and champions supporting me like all the amazing folks at Open Doors have supporting them to navigate systems that are completely unfair and unacceptable in their behavior because we know it still happens. I was lucky to have my mother as an advocate that I imagine very much like Ginger who was dogged in re refusing to accept somebody else's idea of what was okay. But the more we support and create space for this organization to do its amazing work in the community, the less likely we're ever to hear more stories like the story I have. And my story continued to be challenged most of my life. But for those amazing people who stepped in and chose to be hope dealers in my story, it would have been very different. And I experienced lots of loss because what we know even now, years later, is that young people navigating this systems, young people of color navigating this systems are at risk. These are my brothers, my best friends in the world. And I want to tell you that they're the two of the brilliant, most brilliant people I know 
I've shook hands with the president. I've testified before Congress. I've engaged in high level talking about what the world will be, blah, blah, blah. And still, these two men are the most brilliant I know personally. I met Maya Angelou and I loved it. I met Alex Haley, enjoyed it. I've met lots of great people. And these two who kept me alive and who I kept alive surviving on the streets that, that didn't want us to be more than what it told us we could be. Eventually they accepted that. My two best friends, the two smartest people I know are serving life sentences. So that's the downside of it. Although I'm so blessed that I got out and I had people holding me up to the possibility, not just the present of who I was. We lose so many because we don't all have access because sometimes our young people have been so battered and beaten by a system that's told them what they can't be, that they finally believe it. And it's a sad place to be. But we have to make choices. And those choices led me to, to, to places where I can actualize my own dreams. I could advocate and fight up through law school and college, even though I got expelled multiple times, refusing to give up because people told me I had a right. I had finally found supports. And those are the things that matter. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe once said, if you treat a man as he is, he will remain as he is. But if you treat a man as he can and should be, he will become as he can and should be. When I imagine the work of Open Doors, I imagine in the conversations I've had in the years that I've known them, that they go into conversation. And those of you who wrote in the chat how you've experienced them, you know this. They come into conversations not talking about what your problem is, but what your possibility is. And that is such a different way to see a person, not as they are, but as they could be, and then helping them scaffold and build to become that thing. That's what I think is the most amazing gift that our friends at Open Doors have provided for the community that they serve. That's what we're here to celebrate. That's why you're here supporting because you know either through personal experience or through anecdotes of some other amazing person, you know because of that support that they are here present and purposeful in making sure that futures are brighter, that communities and families are stronger, and that possibility lives. And that's an amazing, amazing gift. And trust me, I know what happens when those things aren't present. I feel it every day when I think about what would happen if my brothers who navigated some of the same challenges as I did inside and out could believe that there was a community out there they deserved to be a part of and was supporting them in becoming the men they could be in the world. We all deserve a chance to become the hero of our own story. When we're lucky enough to partner and engage with organizations that hold us up instead of hold us back, the chances of that happening increase exponentially. And that is the thing that we're here to celebrate. Now, I know I'm about at my time, but before I go, I wanted to mention that I do have a couple of books in the auction. And I'm excited. I sent these books in. I autographed them. Uh, Written Off is this, my own story of navigating the world uh, with multiple challenges. The Journey of York is the story. Of, uh, and you all are in Washington State. You all know the Lewis and Clark expedition, but you may not know York, the only African-American member of the expedition. And, and so I wrote a children's book chronicling his experience uniquely of that. I have a one-man show that I've toured nationally for the last 20 years telling his story. I was part of the National Bicentennial, spent mo a year in Washington being a part of the commemoration and making sure his story was part of it. And so those two autographed books are in the auction. I encourage you to go. But wait, I wanted to give you something else. The poem that I read at the beginning, The Race, I actually have an artist working to create that into a book. And this is just, a, this may not even get in the book, but this is the picture that I want to share with you. I am offering to put into that bundle of two books, one of the first autographed copies of this book when it comes out, which I'm hoping to happen before the end of the year. And I will send it to Open Doors and they will get it to whoever wins those books. So I think I have exhausted my time and I think that uh, I am so thankful for the opportunity to be here with you all tonight and to be in this conversation. And I look forward to, to hanging around and, and seeing how I can be of service in the amazing work that continues to go forward uh, 
through Open Doors into this community of amazing, amazing hope dealers. Thank you all so much. Hassan, thank you so much for those inspiring words. Mm -hmm. It doesn't show, you know, we're not in the same room together, but I think we all want to stand up and give a standing ovation. You are so inspiring. Your, your, your voice, your presence, uh, your ability to share and to dig deep. Um, I, th I think we all felt it. And you see all the, all the people putting up their hands of applause and their hands of clapping. And, and so thank you. And I don't think your time is up. I, I'm, I'm willing to throw out the rest of the script. You got 30 more <laughs> minutes, my friend. You go right ahead. We would, we would love that. That'd be I would, amazing. I would love that too. That would be. Well, maybe that's that's our part two. Maybe we'll mm. have to we'll have to plan for a follow up and uh, a, a, a sequel. I love that idea. <laughs> I, I'm Thanks right there with Thank you. Thank you all. Absolutely, Hassan Davis. Everybody, I mean, truly inspiring. I could listen to him speak for hours, and um, I know um, with the books he has and with the opportunity to share. Um, with all of us, it's just there, there's there's so there's so many messages and so much positivity um, that that Hassan can share with us. So, friendly reminder to everybody: um, we're a little bit less than thirty minutes left until the auction is over. So, let Hassan's words remind you of the importance of all the great work going on with Open Doors. Um, wanna um, just let everybody know, uh, one of the great auction items includes the Triple R Relaxation Basket. It's an assortment of 20 items with the sole purpose of self-care. There are books in the basket like Michelle, o Michelle Obama's book, Becoming. There's, a there's Aroma Guru Roll on Muscle Ease. There's an Aroma Guru Roll on Tea Tree Therapy. There are shower fizzies aromatherapy, eucalyptus snowfall candle, candle wax warmer, and two boxes of tea, Bigelow orange spice, and a celestial seasonings sampler. So that, and if you're on the, um, if you're on the page with the silent auction, just type in the search bar triple R, and that'll take you right to that relaxation basket. Now that we've heard from Hassan, and I know we could hear from him a lot more, we want to hear a few words from our ODMF families. And of course, it would take weeks to hear from every family we serve. But unfortunately, we don't have that much time, right? Um, so here's a short video of two clients who receive services from our organization. My name is Gannett from Eritrea. I have my uh, in uh, my son in America. Now in America three years. I come in in Israel from Fiji. Uh, I now I I help him uh, open door uh, a lot. I have. Uh, uh, tackle, uh, tackle open door. I help me too, too much, too much. I don't uh, um, oh, for my son. Uh, I help me for uh, application, every application for for, for my son. I uh, help me open door. I uh, the, for my son. Uh, after school, uh, she she named uh, Mia Mia. Uh, I speak. I help him in open door too much uh, a lot. Ah, Mia Mia, good thing. We are at Mamlakale. Yeah, DDA. Yeah, good thing. Yeah, takle le takle doula lo. Yeah, me ta. We are at the takle le zam le zam ta lini na. Min do no biya doula lo le takle. Takle, uh, yeah, transfer it at Ganyala. Uh, what the home care, Lily J, the home care, Yamisaraso, uh, care manager, 
እኔ ስለም እንግሊሽ ስለማው ቁጥሩ አድርጌ እሱም ያግዘኛል አሁን ለልጄ ሆምኬር አላች አለው የሚሰራው ከቤት መጣው ብዙ ነው የሚያጉዝኝ ኦፕን ነው ብዙ ነው የሚያጉዝኝ አንዳንድ አንዳንድ ጊዜ ፉድ ካለ ፉድ አለ ብሎ ይነግረኛልና በመሰጅም ለካ ይለካዋል አንድ ሩቅ ስለሆነ ኬንት ሁሉ ጊዜ አልሄድም ግን አንዳንድ ጊዜ ምግብም ያጉዝኛል ብዙ ነው የሚያጉዝኝ የአፍተር ስኩሉ አለ አሁን ፕሮግራም ልጄ ይማራል አፍተር ስኩል ከ5 ከ6 ከ6 ነው እንጃ አሁን ድረስ ይቻለው ብዙ ነው የሚያጉዝኝ በጣም ጥሩ ካምፓኒ ነው አሁንም እኔ የምፈልገው ልጄ እንግሊሽ እንዴት አድርጎ እንግሊሽ የምናገር እንዴት አድርጎ ሊጽፍ ይጽፋል አሁንም ቆጠር አለኝ ለዚህም ቆጠር አለኝ ሰው መጣው እዚ ሊያስተምረው እንደዛ ነው አንድ አንድ ነገር እኔ እዚህ አገር ሲመጣ በጣም ተሸግረ ነበር አሁን አንድ ሴት አለችልኝ እንደዛ አልኮ የሚያጉዙት አለችልኝ የተክል ቴሌፎን ሰጠችንና ወደ ኦፊስ ይጄ እንደዛ እንደዛ ፈልጌ ነው አልኩት የ በየዲዲኤ ነው ተሸግረው የነበርኩት አፕላይ ላድርጋለሁ ለልጄ አሁን በኋላ ሲሄድ ወደ ኦፊስ ኦፕን ዶር ሲሄድ እናገዛለን አዘሽ ብለው ላኩልኝና ሁሉ ግዜ ሁሉ የዲዲኤ ዲዲኤ ተጀምሮ ነበር ግን ኦፕን ነው ኦፕን ዶር ነው የጨርሱ ተጀምሮ ነው ግን Luliet Mebus I am from Ethiopia The reason why I came to Open Door is because my son he is twice exceptional and became a little bit difficulty and Open Door gave me a lot of help with my son uh, school they advocate for my son they come when i have a meeting they connect me with people uh, they help me when the pandemic came they were right there with us helping us you know feel so good to have an organization that they care about human being that's what i feel like open door and I am very happy and satisfied with open door service. True people to have a difficulty. I have a son like I said was exceptional. It was very difficult to figure it out and through word of mouth, through people. because open door is for people like us they we don't know all the resource without open door it will be very hard for my son education for me will be hard as a mother and the support is amazing and this is the i am I don't know what to say is this I am satisfied and without this uh, organization I would not be here today happy and you know a lot of help thank you for open door well I am so immense the support for Lana she gave me the consistency the love the care regardless you know sometimes i get emotion and sometimes i i probably don't do it all right in the meeting this is my child i get really emotion or but falana always she bring me to the center she always make me to calm down and i really appreciate her she is amazing family support and ginger 
Miss Ginger. Thank you so much. Without your kindness, without your big heart, without your organization, I and my son, we will never, never make it without you guys' support. And we thank you for the every education, for everything you've given us. We appreciate you. What awe-inspiring words. Thank you, Gannett. Thank you, Luliet. Um, you know, it, it just so, so amazing to think about the journey to come to a new country, a new city, and, um, and the challenges and finding open hearts and finding open doors and finding resources. You know, like Luliet said, she was so satisfied and she didn't know what she would do without open doors. Um, and it's to hear those stories is really why we're here tonight, right? So there are so many stories that, that open doors can share since we first opened our doors in 2009. And with your support, more positive outcomes will arise. Luliette is a small business owner of Ethiopian Queen's Touch. She has graciously donated a one hour therapeutic massage in our auction. She's extremely passionate about healing the body. She balances the whole body to heal and connects the muscles from the inside out. So bid while you still can. The silent auction is still open. There's around 15 more minutes to bid. So let's make those minutes count everyone. And I want to announce to everyone that we have just received a $1,000 donation from a family involved. And we want to take an opportunity, we want to take the opportunity to challenge everyone watching right now to match this donation and to give what you can. When you're on the Open Doors, Open Hearts for Open Doors silent auction page, there are so many great things to bid on, but there's also a donate button. On the top search bar, highlighted in blue, it says donate. And whether you win an auction item or not, whether you're in the bidding for one of the auction items or not, we're hearing the stories. We heard from Gannett, we heard from Luliette. We know how important the work that Open Doors is doing. So I challenge everyone to give what you can. If you can match that $1,000 donation from that very generous family, go right ahead. Don't, don't think about it twice. Go right ahead and feel comfortable making that donation. If that's not your comfort level, find your comfort level and let's make that donation. So support ODMF. To, I, I love, I wish I could read all the comments uh, in, the, in the chat. You know, Rebecca saying, donate big. And uh, Tamara, and if I got that wrong, Tamara, thank you for supporting ODMF. Um, Kedar's clapping along. Ross says, let's go, people give. There's only eight items, and there are also eight items left with zero bids. Get them before somebody else does. Get in there and get some great, great autumns in the silent auction. Our next performance is from Miss Dahlia. She is from one of our longest serving families at Open Doors. She's the youngest of three. Her family migrated from Iraq and since joining ODMF, she and her family have been dedicated to helping other families. Her father, Nizar, has served as a board member for nearly 10 years. Dahlia is a client at ODMF. She's living with Down syndrome. She learned to play the piano at an early age, and she is so excited to perform for us today. So let's give a big, warm welcome to Dahlia. I'm ready.
I'm done. Oh, Miss Dahlia, that was phenomenal. Thank you. That was so amazing. I had tears in my eyes. And I'm just, I know I speak for everyone watching right now that we're so proud of you. And we can't wait to keep hearing your story uh, as you continue playing piano and as you continue learning and growing and, and just thank you so, so much. Uh, You're for welcome. And, and to, to, that's a very courageous thing you did to, to, um, to perform in front of a, a crowd. And so there are, you know, there's a lot of people watching right now and you did amazing. So thank you. You're welcome. That is Miss Dahlia, everybody. And what, what, what a beautiful performance. Um, and I'm just, you know, again, taking that time to think about um, how, how amazing of a job Miss Dahlia did and how um, her family um, has been impacted by open doors and the opportunity that we have again um, as uh, it, we um, to, to, to make a difference tonight. Um, to really be here together in this room. Um, bidding has been extended until 7.30. So remember, if you're bidding on silent auction items, great, that's awesome. But also, if you are, um, if you have the ability to donate on top of your bids, or if you don't, if you realize you're not going to win something you were bidding on, and then you have, um, you, but you you were deciding to spend to, to donate some money, go right ahead and keep that going. Speaking of raising some money, I want to take the time to highlight a very special auction item that has been donated uh, to the auction by Executive Director Ginger Kwan. While we know her to be an amazing leader, did you also know that she's an amazing chef? I'm guessing some people knew that, but I'm guessing many people did not. Olga says Ginger is a great cook. Um, so I can't wait to see how this one does. She is truly a woman of many talents, which is why she's donating dinner for eight. That's right. We would like to take this opportunity to host a live bid. And, and if you're on the auction page, it says in the item description, 
This item will switch over to live auction during the closing celebrations. So be sure to attend so you're the winning bidder. Don't miss out on this unique opportunity to have dinner with Ginger. She'll prepare a meal of your choosing. Um, she can prepare a meal of chi a Chinese style meal that includes an appetizer, soup, a noodle dish, entrees, um, and whatever your dietary needs or restrictions are, she will respect those. It can either take place at her home or in a location of your choice, of course, provided that there's an adequate kitchen. Um, so this is a very, very special, you know, the, the love for ginger is obvious. Um, it, it's great to see, uh, as Sherry says, ginger is an amazing cook. It is authentic Chinese food, so delicious. Um, and so um, we're going to do you know, this is a little bit different than when, if we were all in a room together and people were raising their hands. So I'm gonna ask you to write in the bid, in the chat, where you're writing right now, where I see Rebecca and, and Thea and so, so Safio and Mahad and Sherry. And, and if I'm getting, um, if I'm mispronouncing these names, I truly, truly apologize. Um, Mona is there and Anthea says, uh, Ginger single-handedly cooked for our wedding, that is amazing. So the number was 600 um, is, is what the current bid was on the website. Um, and so we're gonna scrap that because Grace has already bid at 625. So we're at 625, I need 650. So Grace is there at 625, I need somebody at $650 who's willing to go to that level. Diana says, Ginger, blessed to be part of ODMF and knowing you are an amazing manager in person, we are blessed to have such a warrior among us. Um, Adrian is pledging $650 now. Um, so Grace, you have, you have some competition here. Uh, Adrian is at $650. Um, Joy says, Ginger is also a wealth of knowledge. So not only do you get an amazing dinner, not only do you get amazing food, but you get coaching and you get her, I mean, look at her smile. You get her positivity, you get her influence um, and she'll make you laugh, uh, Safio says. Um, so. Um, Grace was there at 625. Adrian wants to be at 650. So I'd love for somebody to go up to 675. If somebody can go to 675, let's hear 675. If I was in a room right now, I'd be pointing at everybody. Hey, I got 650. I need 675. I got 650. I need 675. I'd be speaking like that. Um, Tamara or Tamara says, and lots of stories to share. I believe that, um, that there are lots of stories to share. And Ross says, She's a good cook. And Grace is up to 675. And Adrian is back up to 700. We have reached 700 on this one. Um, so it looks like it's Grace and, um, and Adrian who are, who are looking at this one. Um, as everybody else, it's fun to watch. And Grace is up to 735. She skipped that 25. I like that. I like skipping that 25 and going up to, th going up to 35. Adrian goes up to 750. So let's see what Grace can commit here. Um, and if anybody else wants to pop in last second, you know, and, and get in there, like Kylie just did. Kylie, and if I, I mispronounced that, I apologize. Kylie is up to 800. Kylie is up to 800. Unbelievable. So Grace is in it. Adrian's in it. Kylie's in it. Uh, unbelievable. As Rebecca says, woohoo. Um, and Adrian's up to 850. Adrian's up to 850. This is, I have never done a voice auction like this before on the computer, watching the numbers come in and it's amazing. Erica says, thank you, Ginger, for dreaming and for living it out. No doubt about that. So Adrian right now is our leader at $850. Um, Kylie, you're still, you're still alive and um, Grace, you're still around as well. So 850 is that number right now to beat. Um, and Adrian has it at $850. Look at that smile. Just look at that picture. Look at Ginger Kwan, executive director, uh, mentor, coach, extraordinaire. No doubt about it. Unbelievable. Ginger, ODMF can make it with your cooking. No doubt about it. I love that. So I've got Adrian at $850. Olga says, and super mom. Wow. Maybe she, maybe she has some parenting tips for you as well. Um, we could all use those. I have two girls at home and I could use... Um, all the parenting tips uh, that, that anybody wants to give. Um, so I'm at $850 for Adrian. I've got $850 going once. I've got $850 going twice. Anthea says it's worth it. You'll also probably be able to take home lots of tons of leftovers. 
Um, Meow Meow Dang says cultural sharing, unbelievable. Um, so I'm at going once, going twice. And here's what I'm going to ask. So Adrian's at $850. Kylie, you bid $800. And I'm going to put you on the spot in front of everyone here. Kylie, are you willing? I'm not going to ask you to go above $850. But are you also willing to go to $850? Adrian's already in for $850. You were in for $800. Would you raise that by $50? And would you go to $850 and match Adrian's bid? That's my question for you. Kylie says yes. And the reason I ask that is because um, I, I talked to Ginger before tonight. And I said, Ginger, if we have two people who are really interested, could we do two dinners? And she said, if there are people interested, we could do two dinners. So going once for Adrian at $850, going once for Kylie at $850, going twice, one dinner at $850, another dinner at $850, sold one dinner to Adrian, one dinner to Kylie for a total of $1,000. $700. Amazing. Thank you so much to both of you. Thank you to everyone who bid. Thank you to everyone who cheered them on. Thank you to everyone who was part of this. I am volunteering my, um, my mouth and my stomach if you want to invite me to be part of the dinner. No, I'm just kidding. I'm sure everyone wants to be a part of that. But Adrian at $850 and Kylie at $850. Thank you so, so much, um, Ginger. Get ready because you're going to have two amazing, amazing parties that you are going to have to get ready for. Um, so, and like I said before, she's willing to tailor the meal to her guest needs. Her specialties include seafood, vegetarian, Chinese noodle, egg rolls, pot stickers, Thai chicken, and she'll also play some traditional Chinese games with you as well. So with that, let's bring Ginger back on. Um, Ginger, I'm so excited. This was so fun. Like I said, I've never done a voice auction like that before virtually. And it was so much fun. And part of why it was so much fun is because the ODMF family is so strong and believes so much in your mission, in our mission, in all the great things that we are doing in our communities. So Ginger, I'm going to hand it off to you. I can't wait to hear about these dinners and I can't wait to hear these words you'll leave us with tonight. <laughs> well, it was so fun to just to see that people will enjoy my meal and I guarantee you I will do my best to serve you and bring the joy to your life as well. So looking forward to get connected with you soon. And uh, we, I know that we have, we are going over five minutes now, so I won't take long, but I hope that all of you tonight have enjoyed the program we have shared with you. And uh, Open Doors is an equity in action. We don't just talk, we act, and we truly practice what we preach. We believe in the youth and the, the people with disabilities we serve, and we are here to provide like what Hassan has said, the hope. We provide opportunities and we see their possibilities and see them have different gifts and talents. And that's truly what we believe in the people we serve. So our hope is join us, join us together to provide the wings to those who need that. And so they can fly high, they can soar, and we will be able to see them you know, smiling and achieve their life goals and thrive in the very inclusive community that we all created for them together. And we have a long way to go. And so your every, every a little bit of your support gonna help us. And it will, I, I know that the families, the youth we have served will feel your, your love, your care. And we are here to build our communities together. So let's open our hearts and to open up more doors for more people who need help. And thank you so much for coming to our event tonight to share our joy and also celebrate our 
growth and also the beautiful event here. Thank you. And one more time, let's hear it for Ginger. Let's hear it for Hassan. Let's hear it for Gannett. Let's hear it for Luliet. Let's hear it for Miss Dahlia. Let's hear it for Adrian and Kai Lee. Let's hear it for everyone who is a part of this phenomenal event. Let's hear it for the entire Open Doors staff who work tirelessly behind the scenes to make this great. And of course, once again, let's thank our sponsors, Group Health Foundation, Seattle Children's Foundation, and Home Street Bank. What an evening, what an opportunity to connect, what an opportunity to be together. Hassan, I know you're still there. Thank you so much for your inspiring, inspiring words. So glad to be here. Thank you all. Thanks, Ginger, for your vision and your, your hard work to make it all happen. Absolutely. And like um, Sabrine wrote in the chat um, that the, um, the, the silent auction is still open. The opportunity to donate and bid is still open. Um, and so thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Ginger, I'll let, you, I'll let you have the last word and we'll let people get on with their evenings. And remember, keep bidding. And if you're having dinner right now and if you have maybe a glass of wine or something like that, feel free to, uh, feel free to bid a little bit more on some of those uh, silent auction items as well. Well, I just hope that everyone here, you are inspired by Hassan's uh, words, her, uh, his stories, and many of the, the uh, participants who share their talents here. Um, my heart is full, is really full. And I know that's gonna carry me for a long, long time to continue to give me the strength. And I hope that that also fills your heart as well. So for that, thank you so much and good night. Have a a good sleep tonight <laughs> and have a great weekend. All right. Bye.